Hey guys and girls, I'm Ellie, and today we're playing Doki Doki Literature Club. So the um, the chaotic mess that I am, I'm recording this about two and a half hours before it is scheduled to come out. I wanted to give everyone as much time as they could get for commenting their poems um, and stuff like that which resulted in me not hearing my alarm today or like switching off my alarm without me remembering it and yeah I woke up pretty late and that's that's not great uh, so I'm gonna probably only record this one episode um, but I'm still gonna do whatever I wanted to do uh, so I'm gonna try to just make this one episode and then along the course of the week do more um, because now I won't wait you can still like post poems if you want to uh, I'll be glad to read them but uh, be aware that it might be some like a few weeks until until I read them out loud or something like that so yeah, but I planned to do it. So technically I planned to read the poems and still like uh, do half of an hour of gameplay after that. So I'm gonna do that. This episode is probably gonna be a little bit longer. Um, so <laughs> yeah, uh, I hope the time is enough for me to get this out at the, at the right time. So let's go into some poems because I I told you you could comment them down below and I would read them out loud so I have a little bit of juice to read the poems now here is a rather short one but an interesting one um, yeah um, we've talked about it a little bit so this is hope and Jason wrote, Hard times I always endure, overwhelming me, making me unsure, but positive I can yet see 80 reasons to be happy with me. And this, first of all, it, it resonates with me right now in these times because, you know, Corona is going on and all this stuff and it's hard times for the whole world at the moment and at least this has like a positive note in the end um, which well makes us hope again and uh, this is the title and as he told me in the comments after that the words hard overwhelming positive and 80 are capitalized usually this wouldn't really like get me because okay first of all i'm german we capitalize a lot but uh, also most of those words are the beginnings of the lines the only thing is the positive um so um they spell out hope h-o-p-e and this is a really nice thing to think of um it just gives the 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 poem a deeper meaning and just drives home the the idea that in those times when we aren't sure we have to have hope and it's gonna be better and this is what like drives us along yeah really nice short but sweet and with a really nice message for those times so next one is a haiku by the void alchemist um very nice i i told you before that i like it um all you seek is not the truth exists regardless. Do you want to see? So um, what I really like about this is it's very vague. So it can be basically said for like every like situation because the truth can just be everywhere. Um, it can be the truth about something we read or a problem in the world or whatever. Um, so that the truth exists but like the, the, the searching for the truth is another matter altogether I, I I like it it's also short sweet nice 
Okay, and then I got two more and those two are people that are in the group that, um, well, that I mentioned in one of the earlier episodes, uh, the group that made me play this game and uh, we're basically doing something similar, but mostly not with poems, we're, we're doing writing goals, but uh, the two here gave us some poems to read. The Wind by Light Fox RS. I'm not used to calling you by your username. Howling, blowing softly into my face, I close my eyes. Hugging, I greet the darkness with a glance. I don't believe his lies. Wildly, kindling a fire deep inside, the warmth spreading through my limbs. Bravely, I open my eyes, standing with pride. It was only a glimpse. But life goes on and on. I, I like the last line. But life goes on and on, and it doesn't fit with, like with the with the structure we have before. But it's like it it disrupts the structure and therefore has like more of a more of effect. Um, I, I like the structure. Um, having like the face and. Mm. Yeah, inside, pride, eyes, lies, limbs, glimpse, all this. Um, so, a rhyming. Like, we had, first we had uh, um, the, the, the pair rhymes, the rhyming couplets. Then we had no rhyme because it was a haiku. Now we have this very interesting structure, um, which actually is a little bit reminiscent of a part of my poem that I wrote for you. But yeah, um, darkness and fire deep inside. It, it, it's very like, it's very vague too. It's not a specific situation like maybe Natsuki would write. Would write. Um, it's yeah, it, it can be fit in with multiple situations but yeah great work and now life by napster bloog 22 yeah also not used to calling you by your username <laughs> life love can be strange but in exchange so can be hate evaluate what about friendship it's like a tulip handle it with care Careful, I declare. So what's the lesson here? Please give your friend an ear, and please be there for them. Help whenever you can. Please be grateful for your friends. You never know when it ends. Cause living alone again would really suck now and then. Thank you, dear internet. It's like a big reset. I'm very happy now, so let me take a bow. Okay, you you deserve the bow. Um, okay, this is the, the only, like, this is the only poem where I can actually say something about the... I, I don't want to say too much about it because it's very personal and uh, I, I know that this is a very specific thing and the person writing this, uh, this is um, basically describing, um, well, the internet friends he made and the internet group on Discord we had and um, how that changed his life and I'm very happy to be part of it. I'm very happy you're better now, and yeah. So those are like the only four I got, um, but like I said, if you want to give me more, <laughs> I'm very, I would be very happy to read them. So now, oh, I didn't, may maybe in post editing I will put it in because I, I didn't, um, I only wrote it down in my notebook, my own poem. It's a little bit longer than the others. I'm so sorry. I don't want to get all the, all like the, the the attention and stuff like that. But it's just it it's gotten longer. Um, here. <laughs> it's called blank page, and no, I'm not gonna analyze it for you because I wrote it myself. I could analyze a lot and I would know what it means but uh, you can if you want to you don't have to I'm just gonna read it now and then 
go back into the game. Um, blank page. Spirits cry, but the only voice I hear is mine. Piercing eyes watching me from every corner. Paper white, the promise of a hollow word. In my mind, another blank page. Appreciate the clean glow of an empty void. Anticipate what will never be visible. Investigate the marks that were never left behind. Reinstate what never has been. I have tried to move the pen across the page, yet I find it has never left its cap. Is it I who screams into the abyss? Can I try to make them answer me? My mind speaks words, filling every space that's left, reaching out, writing here, then there, seeing smiles, hearing no voices. I lend my pen, nobody lends theirs. And in the end, one question remains unspoken. Who is the blank page staring at me? Okay, I'm gonna leave you to your thoughts on that. <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything. And we will jump right in, because I don't have too much time, uh, into Doki Doki Literature Club and basically load the game. Um, okay, from now on, I will be um, I will be saving more frequently and uh, seeing like so in the end we can maybe see what some changes would have like done. Um, but yeah, uh, we're starting here and we're writing another poem. Um, okay, I told you that I would gonna go with with Sayori, right? Didn't we? Uh, so, I guess, um, probably the color? Thought so. Um, and it's gonna be sunny. Is the kitty about her? No, it's not, but hey, fine. Um, horror hair whistle dance. We're gonna do the dance. Uh, and the fun. <laughs> and warm. And sweet. Yeah, we're gonna go with Sayori. It, it's it's working pretty well so far. Uh, by now we actually like know about... Uh, I don't know. Hope? Yeah, it works. Um... Oh, let's go with Fluffy. Okay, it's, it's Natsuki. <laughs> I mean, it could have been both. Uh, let's go with Daydream and... Puppies? No? Okay. She's she, she's not the puppies, but no, also not pure. Oops. <laughs> but hey, it's gonna be the family, pretty much. Um, uh, no, okay. Um, laughing would be hers. Ah, uh, silly probably too. Okay, is the boop gonna be hers? I like the boop. No, it's a, it's not ski. Okay, I like the boop though. Um, joy, and um, no, it's not gonna be suicide. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna go with strawberry. Okay, it's like, um, yeah, it, it's sometimes a little bit like difficult to, to between Natsuki and Sayori, but. We're gonna go with smile, and it works. And we're back again. Oh man, I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked into you. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano. Well, maybe not determination. <laughs> Yeah, I feel you, Monica. I feel you <laughs> starting up stuff. <laughs> but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival, too. <laughs> I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Uh, weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival. 
but it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have a fr have fried squid? Okay, fried squid. Squid? Yeah, Monica. <laughs> That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? I never tried it, to be honest. You, of all people. Uh, I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because! It's right in your name! Wait, what? Mon Ika. Okay, so, so Japanese that I don't understand, probably. Uh, that's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make sense in translation. I can think to myself that it's probably something Japanese. Uh, but Monica's right. <laughs> and Natsuki is confused. Ah, never mind. At least Monica is breaking the fourth wall, you know. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me? Where's Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I've moved my hand in front of her face. <laughs> uh, you're spacing out again. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Uh, is everything alright? Uh, of course. Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Yeah, it does. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sayori so shows me a big smile. Yeah, it's probably not an earnest smile, to be honest. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright. If you say so, I worriedly glance at Sayori before turning back toward everyone else. Sayori is not okay. Someone should help her. Or just find out what's the problem. But the conversation has already dispersed, with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who's shuffling through the some papers at her desk. Jordan, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging Robert Eraser up and down her desk. That could be boredom, but that could be more. Maybe there's something on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Jordan. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really like this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me, too. I mean, I'm also friends with her, and I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know. Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Uh, are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with a person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing of her mind on her mind is you, Jordan. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, we don't know. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, yeah, because our character is the densest person on this earth. <laughs> I probably shouldn't say too much, but Sayori talks about you more than anything else, you know? Uh, she's been so much happier ever since you've joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it has all always has been. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, maybe you don't know that she's been different sometimes because every time you are around, she is like you know her and that is how it works. Yeah, dense people. You're so funny, Jordan. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you. Uh, I said too much. I'm sorry. What do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I tried to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Uh, alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her, but she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from her. Here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me to, to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out to the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Yes, that's what I'm waiting for. I want to go through some of them now. Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica and she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about with Sayori. Okay, so... Because Sayori was a little bit down, I'd say we go to her first. Because... Yeah, I, I want to give her the attention. Right now. So let's go to her. And find out how she is. Like, I... I <sighs> I want to know if there's another problem or if it's really just what we're at the moment thinking it is, but it might be something else too. This is your best one so far. Thank you! <laughs> it's really, really nice, Jordan. Uh, thanks. Hmm. So, Yuri, you've been a little quiet today. Is everything alright? Uh, of course. Everything is fine. Maybe I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> Do you want to nap or something? No, that's silly. Don't worry about me, okay? I only want to see smiles on your face. Well, alright. Hey, Jordan. I'm still a little surprised. I really thought that you would try writing your poems like the way Yuri does. Or even Natsuki. But in the end... Yeah. I guess you're the one who likes this one the most. Yeah, um, that's what we're doing at the moment. <laughs> Why? You don't want to get closer with everyone else? Wait, uh, of course I do. But that doesn't mean I need to try so hard to impress him. Um, I still understand you the most, Sayori. I knew you have to sometimes put up with me. And I have to sometimes put up with you. But we have a wavelength or something. I mean, they've been friends before. They had to have things in common before right just just thinking about it <laughs> and this is how the poem came out sometimes it feels like you're the only exciting thing in my life oh that's cute okay so sometimes it's just easy to write when thinking about you sayori no jordan oh she's crying i don't deserve this you're too nice to me you deserve this girl you deserve this okay i've decided i'm gonna go with you this game and you deserve this girl. Why are you doing this? Sayori has trouble keeping her voice steady all of a sudden. If you had fun with everyone else instead, this would be so much easier. Sayori, I glance around the room to make sure nobody has noticed this. Sayori, I've probably never said this before, but I don't understand what you're fearing right now. Tell me what will cheer you up. Sayori shakes her head. She sniffles and keeps shaking her head. Finally, she gathers herself and puts on a smile. It's nothing, Jordan. It's just a little rain cloud. I'm sorry you had to see that. <laughs> I promise it won't happen again. Just smiles from everyone, okay? That's all that matters. Go play with everyone else. I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Sayori, tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom, humming to herself. We didn't read her poem. 
Something very weird is up. Something very weird is up. Like, we couldn't even read her poem. Did she even write one? H how much is happening with her? Like, I'm worrying about her. <laughs> Hmm. Okay, uh, probably since it's totally like... It doesn't make any difference which one you pick first. The, the others are probably not gonna say anything about like Sayori walking out. Uh, so let's just go with Monica and then go with the other two girls. Um, I wanna hear her tip of the day. <laughs> I hope it's great. Hi Jordan. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people... I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. <laughs> it's kind of funny. How so? No, not the poem. I mean, it's funny how your poems and Sayori's poems have been getting more and more similar to each other every day. Yeah, because we're doing it right now. <laughs> I'm trying. Sometimes Natsuki jumps in there, but I try to do Sayori at the moment. We're gonna go with the friends to lovers route if, it, if it's working. <laughs> I'm surprised you're so in sync with her. Then again, you've been spending a lot of time together lately, haven't you? Uh, I guess you could say that. Although we kind of grew up as best friends, I haven't been seeing as much of her this past year. But since I joined the club, we've been spending a lot of time together again. I see, I see. That reminds me about how Sayori's been a little bit off today. Yeah? Did she tell you something? <sighs> well, Jordan, you haven't been flirting with her, have you? Oh, okay. Of course not. I've been treating her like I always do. Alright, just making sure. I know how much you care about her. It would be terrible if something bad happened to her, so keep an eye on her. Sigurd has been acting so much happier ev ever since you joined the club. What could have happened all of a sudden? Well, never mind. This really isn't the time to be talking about this. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, alright? Uh, alright. Okay, let's see the poem, because... The Lady Who Knows Everything An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth, the lady who knows everything, a beautiful lady who has found every answer, all meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather, lost adrift the sky, victim, victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search. I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains. The last dim star glimmering in the twilight, twilight sky. Until one day, the wind ceases to blow. I fall. And I fall and fall and fall even more. Gentle as a feather. A dry quill, expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and the forefinger. The hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end or no gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning, there is no purpose, and we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back a load, and I pick up a gust of wind. Ooh. That turned, that turned dark. So basically, the lyrical eye, basically the feather, is searching for something, for answers. And then when she finally finds the person who apparently has the answers, the answer is there is no meaning. There's no purpose in anything. And just... Sends her off again. Th this turned... This turned dark. Um, and very depressed in the end. Um, whew. 
yeah, I don't know what to say to this, to be honest. Uh, it's... For me, it's pretty self-explanatory what it might mean. Like, if, if we see it in case of Monica, um, how she... Like, she's doing... Like, we have the background story of her. Of her doing all the stuff. She's, she's doing everything. But it seems like she doesn't find any meaning in anything of it. So, um... She's doing a lot, but um, even though she said maybe it's passion, um, I don't know, she seems a little bit aimless t from time to time. Like this feather, basically, um, which basically looks for something, but, but is still aimless because it has to depend on the wind and probably tries to find some meaning in life and... Uh, now she finds out that meaning does not exist, that the legend that she's looking for does not exist, and that is sad. <sighs> I wonder, like, we, we're writing all the poems more like, okay, if it's Sayori, Natsuki, or Yuri. But, like, there seems to be a lot to Monica as well, so... How does that work? Do... Because I've, I've found out that probably like you you find out more about the people the more you like interact with them so basically we're doing the Sayori route now uh, going more into her stuff um, is there a way to do Monica as well or are you gonna find out more about her only through the poems or maybe any way that we play the game I have no idea but yeah nice poem very very sad you know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the source of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical, because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? That is a good thing, a good question. If we had all the answers, what would be the purpose in still doing stuff and still looking for stuff. That, that Okay, that's a good way to think about it. it. It gives a little bit more perspective to the poem too. Maybe not just sad and aimless, but also a little bit of this mentality that the journey is the goal. But yeah, um... You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? That's a... yeah. Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. Well, basically, like, you're two-dimensional for me right now. <clears throat> okay, yeah, we're speaking personality-wise, I know, but... Yeah, I think you'd know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? <laughs> ah, yeah, that. Anyway, I I love how Monica has those like little snippets of breaking the fourth wall. I love it. <laughs> like, of course, she was saying to Jordan, "Hey, people's personalities have more than one side." But she said two-dimensional instead of one-dimensional, so she basically referred to being 2D. Um, yeah. Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you, what you that your writing is good or okay or bad, they'll want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way, and it will make you want so to continue improving. It's almost like having your own little literature club, don't you think? Well, <laughs> come to think of it. <laughs> yeah, that's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Yeah, basically, that's what I'm doing all the time. <laughs> so... Which one are we gonna go next? Uh, I'm gonna do Yuri because I'm gonna have to prepare for doing more of Natsuki's voice soon. <laughs>
I'm, I'm trying to channel my inner wise Schnee for Natsuki. And the thing is, since I'm technically in a little bit like in the beginning of a project of doing a Ruby fan dub in German, I'm for that, for Weiss in that case, I'm gonna try to channel my inner Natsuki. <laughs> Which is. It's paradox, but it helps. <laughs> so, Yuri. Huh. Decided to try something different today. I guess so. Is that good or bad? Well, neither. I have my preferences, but it would be unfair of me to call something good or bad based on that. As always, I believe what's most important is exploring and discovering yourself. That's comforting. I'm kind of afraid of disappointing you in some way or another. Uh, why me? Well, you're always sophisticated with your writing and have the most advice to share. Is that so? Yuri thinks for a good minute. That must be terrible. Huh? For me to have become someone whose opinion is fearsome. How unlikable of me. You're still likable, Yuri. We still like you. Yuri. It's not as bad as you're making it sound in your head. I just meant that I respect your opinion. I see. I'm sorry that I always overthink and come to those sorts of conclusions. I'm just a little too used to it. Let's not make you feel this way again. Okay? Overthinking? Being disliked. Yuri... What... What am I saying? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to bring that up. Let's move on. Alright. Do you want to share your poem now? Okay. Here. Whew, okay. Beach. A marvel millions of years in the making, where the womb of earth chaotically meets the surface, under a clear blue sky, an expanse of bliss, but beneath grey rolling clouds, an endless enigma, the easiest world to get lost in, is one where everything can be found. One can only build a sand castle where the sand is wet, but where the sand is wet, the tide comes. Will it gently lick at your foundations until you give in? Or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same. Yet we still build sand castles. I stand where the foam wraps around my ankles, with my toes squish into the sand. The salty air is therapeutic. The breeze is gentle, yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary line, tempted by the foaming tendrils. Turn back, and I abandon my peace to you you rode at the shore drift forward and i return to earth forevermore well uh, there's the suicide thoughts again last time we had the knife um this time we have just walking into the sea and never return okay first of all we have the first stanza where everything is like, okay, the easiest word to get lost in is one where everything can be found. Um, so there's so much in life, uh, it's very hard to keep an overview, basically. It's, it's very easy to just lose something. And then the sand castles, so basically you always, you are always at a risk, I would say, as of that, like, you build sand castles, but since the only place where you can build them, you're basically at a risk that it's gonna be destroyed, and um, or at least like bothered. Um, but we still build sand castles, so we still take those risks. Um, we try again and again and again, <sighs> and yeah, then the last one. It it's really more like, okay, now the decision. Do I go back? Do, do I go back and abandon my peace? So basically, go back into the whole chaos of the world. Or do I go forward and end it? And... Yeah. Yeah, Yuri, um... 
If we really don't get too much about the backstory for the other girls, I will definitely... I don't know if I will do it as, like, videos or something like that. But I will definitely, definitely, definitely play the other rounds, basically. I will, uh... I will go, like, the Yuri route and the Natsuki route just to find out more about them, because, um... Yeah, those poems say a lot. Technically, it's always already half an hour. You know what? Today's gonna be a very long episode. It's just gonna be long. I'm, I'm gonna give you the satisfaction of doing this to its end. To, to do Natsuki's poem too, because last time we had the same thing that Natsuki was at the end and in another episode. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm aware that the beach is kind of an inane thing to write about. But I did my best to take a metaphorical approach to it. You say that like you didn't even want to write about it. Oh, you haven't heard? After yesterday, Natsuki and I, well, it was amusing that we wrote some, about something similar in such different ways. So Natsuki wanted us to write about the same topic as each other again. Oh, so Natsuki is gonna write about the beach too. As opposed to better compare the differences in our writing styles, our thought processes. Anyway, it was her idea. Knowing her, it's no surprise that she'd want to do something like that. She's pr she probably just wants to show up. No, I think that's a really nice idea. Uh, but if only if it's a topic that you're both comfortable with. So, um, yeah. It's not like I have a particular interest in his writing style. I just went with her request. But, well, I suppose it's not so bad to write some about something simple on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know. It's good for me to calm my thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I think I agree. Yeah, it's not as easy and simple. Um, thanks for sharing. Let's go with Natsuki pretty quickly and uh, the aftermath of the stuff. I don't know if I will do it like, still, but okay. <clears throat> this one's alright. Alright. Well, yeah, it doesn't blow me away, but there's nothing I really hate about it. It's just not really my style. I mean, that's fine. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Uh, you think so? Yeah, well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Sayori has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so uh, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Wow. <laughs> that was a little unnecessary. But think of it that way, this way. If it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say we each take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem. Here. I'll be your beach. So, another beach poem. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminished your wonder over the years. But today I have a special place, a beach for us to go. A shore reaching beyond your sight, a sea that sparkles with brilliant light. The walls in your mind will melt away before the sunny glow. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought that left you long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand, bathe in sunbeams and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in the salty sea and let me see you shine. Let's leave your memories in a footprint trail, set you free in my windy sail, and remember the reasons you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away, I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought had left you long ago. But if you let me by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you learn to love yourself again. That's a nice one. That's very, like, hopeful, like, very escapism, um, I mean, your own escape basically say, says it. Um, but, but, like, in a way more positive than Yuri's has been. Um, it's more like, let go of everything that bothers you, but less in a way of, Okay, going forward and drowning now and leaving Earth, like, uh, and, and leaving life behind for good or something like that. Th this is different. This is more, more a hopeful tone, as I would say. 
um, and also like sometimes very romantic <laughs> when you press your lips to mine um, which makes me think either way it's like really meant as romantic or if it's a metaphor but with Natsuki I'm not really sure if she would go as far as make it such a meta metaphor but maybe maybe she would so very very interesting very different even though we have the beach it's very different from Yuri's and that that's kind of what I like to see when different writers take an approach to the same thing and it turns out so differently and it's so interesting to see how our thought processes are so different from each other um, yeah that that that's a really interesting thing um, not only with like writing but um, since I'm writing, like, I'm not writing my bachelor's thesis at the moment, I'm doing research for it, but I'm researching translation and, um, just seeing how either, like, different people can translate stuff in different ways or you yourself could translate stuff in different ways based on when you do it. Like, if you have a year in between or more, it's gonna turn out differently. And it's so interesting to see how our brains just work differently. Okay, I'm I'm ranting right now. Uh, let's just talk to Natsuki some more. <laughs> yeah, I felt like I kept writing about negative things, so I wanted to write something with a nice message for once. And you did. Besides, the beach is awesome. Kind of hard to write anything negative about the beach. Mm, Yuri did something. <laughs> well, Yuri's take on it was a little more soft. <laughs> like I said. Well, that's... Jeez, she better not have said anything bad about mine. After all, she was the one who wanted us to write about the same topic. It's interesting, so if we have would have picked Natsuki first, the dialogue would have been probably a little bit different. Right? Um, but it doesn't seem to change too much of the story, right? I hope. <laughs> Maybe I'm gonna, like, in my free time, go the other way around uh, and uh, see w how different the dialogue is, but I don't think it changed too much. After all, she was the one who wanted to, st to write about the same topic. <laughs> can you really see her doing that too? You can really see her doing that too. Making us write about a simple topic and then trying to impress me by coming up with something all fancy. Well, it's not like I care. I just did it anyway. I mean, I guess mine ended up being kind of metaphorical too. Okay, that's what I was saying, so it... There was a metaphor in there. But there's nothing do wrong with doing that once in a while. There's nothing wrong with it, I agree. At the very least, it was good practice. Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring around? Hold on a second. Is it just me or did you say something strange just now? Uh, something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. Catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez! Why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Um, stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. In your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Yuri isn't here. Ah, oh, it seems you're right. <sighs> Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to pee. Natsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on! Uh, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously? Of all the times to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? Okay, that's, that's a thing that that I can agree with Natsuki on. She's not feeling well and usually they go together home all the time. Ooh. Um, so much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Uh, yeah, no, it's not about the lovey-dovey stuff even. It's just a friend thing or just being there for someone thing. If they're not feeling well, then this is the actual time you should maybe take care of them and and be careful that nothing happens to them. Uh, no, first of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Hmm? 
That curious expression coming from Yuri of all people? Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier and everything is fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparation, so let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Natsuki will be making cupcakes. Yes, cupcakes! But we might need a lot of them and different flavors. Can you handle all that by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Sayori will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri? Yuri, you can... Uh, um, guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? Oh, that is... Ouch. Poor Yuri. I... I'm useless. No! That's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know. No, Natsuki's pouting too. Jeez, even I can tell now. I guess I never give Sayori enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. <sighs> that may be the case, but if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So Yuri, you have beautiful handwriting, you know, so you should make some banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that, I... I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great! You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Jordan. The only one who is truly useless. <laughs> Don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. I would be really appreciative of that. Um, that's... Is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Oh my god. So is it only gonna be those three? Okay, since we're going the Sayori route, and if Sayori isn't an option, I'm gonna go with Monica, just to tell you that. Um, but I'm, I'm probably gonna save before that. <laughs> um, I suppose I wouldn't mind a little bit of hey, help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I could give to you. It's not like Monica's going to give me a choice and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Natsuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. Jordan may not like to be around if you, on if you only make him out to be a nuisance. So therefore, you may be more suited to assist him with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds more like you're just making excuses for Jordan to- What are you saying? It will be extremely meticulous work. And baking isn't. Depends on how much you're doing in both cases. Like if it's a lot, a lot, a lot of baking. Yes, help would be nice. But if it's just a little bit, it's it's better if you do it on your own even. Um, and decoration is more like, okay, the more you do, the, the more help you want to get because it's gonna take some time. But yeah, just what do you think? Guys, guys, let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Jordan to decide how he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? So I'm sure he's interested in, you literally just said, I'm surprised at well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying though, jeez, can we just settle this already? Yeah, Jordan, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Uh, of course. <laughs> Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. Oh, okay, we can pick Sayori. Um, so basically, I'm gonna save now. I'm gonna save, and this is gonna be very important. Because this save point, at least at least you can see the save point, so I have I, I can see when which one is the one where the decision is. So we're gonna go with Sayori all the way this time. Um, if you want me to play through more parts uh, a little bit faster, um, and maybe cut out stuff and just, just do the interesting stuff basically, um, we can do that later. But this time, we're gonna go with Sayori, our best friend from childhood basically. And I'm already recording 15 minutes longer than I intended to, but hey, happens. I mean, if it's going to be anyone, then I prefer helping Sayori. I mean, we're already neighbors and 
But Monica said... Monica said that Sayori was helping her. Jeez. Do you really hate us that much? No. Sorry, I didn't mean for this to be difficult. I just... Okay, um... Just think of the club. Then I'm gonna go with Monica. I, I said that before. I'm... Since uh, we're gonna go, so, okay, if Sigori helps Monica either way, uh, we're gonna go there because there's there's gonna be the person we're with right now. Um, I'm sorry about Natsuki and Yuri, but uh, this is the way we're going here, here now and we're gonna do this. <laughs> Maybe someday else another one, but this time, well, I guess I should probably be helping Monica. Yay, you picked me. Hold on one second. Yeah, Monica, you're the one who needs the least help out of all of us. Uh, but I agree with Natsuki. Not only is your work already most suitable for one person, but you already have Skuri as well. But John was the one who... Uh, that doesn't matter. You were the one who scared him into picking you in the first place. You're the club president, Monica. You're supposed to make responsible decisions for the club. Monica, you shouldn't let any ulterior motives interfere with this decision. Ulterior motives? What are you saying, Yuri? In fact, it sounds like you guys are the one with, ones with the terror motives. Wow. Excuse me? Otherwise, that wouldn't have been made into such a big deal in the first place. That's completely false, Monica. Yeah! We have a lot of work to do, you know? We won't do as good of a job if you make us work alone. Uh, maybe that's true. Think of the club, Monica. If we want our event to succeed, then we need to appropriately distribu distribute our resources. Are we gonna have to choose between those two now? Is this... Is this actually what's gonna happen? Um, uh, so are you going to do the right thing, President? Okay, okay, I get it. <sighs> it's technically most logical for Jordan to help one of you two. So, I guess that's what we'll do. Really? Really? We're gonna... Okay, since... Mm, this is a difficult thing. You know what? You know what? Oh gosh, I'm 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 an awful person, but I'm an awful person. <laughs> the decision will be made next time. I'm an awful person. <laughs> I'm sorry, but this episode has been going for long enough and to be honest, let's not do that. <laughs> But hey, you will only have to wait one week. So, on this note, have a nice day, and I see you in the next video with a decision and the end of the cliffhanger. <laughs> Bye.